Okay, this is a, a quick and um, half-baked derivation on how uh, Oliver Heaviside came up with Lorentz contraction before Lorentz did. Uh, first off, I will be using Gaussian units because it uh, makes a lot more sense. Um, biggest difference between SI and Gaussian units is um, charges an intrinsic uh, quantity uh, with the Coulomb, whereas in Gaussian units the charge is um, derived from uh, units of um, length, mass, and time. And if you look at the various uh, units for a potential electric field, mag uh, magnetic field, in SI units they'll have Coulomb, but in Gaussian units, um, all of the units are some combination of um, length, mass, and time. And if you play around with Maxwell's equations, which, funny enough, um, as we know them today, uh, they were published by Oliver Heaviside after he invented vector calculus. Um, but, you know, historically we still call them Maxwell's equations. Um, they are, uh, in SI units, they give this relationship. Permeability of free space times the permittivity of free space is uh, 1 over the speed of light squared. Uh, but in uh, SI units, uh, it's a lot more straightforward. It just gives you C. Uh, there is no um, mu naught nor epsilon naught in Gaussian units. So if you've had ENM, hopefully you recall that the magnetic field can be written as uh, the curl of a vector potential. And in electrostatics, the electric field can be given by uh, minus the gradient of the potential. Um, so the Laplacian operated on the vector potential is minus 4 pi over the speed of light times uh, the current density plus uh, 1 over the uh, speed of light squared times the second time derivative of the vector potential. And um, the Laplacian operated on the potential is minus 4 pi times the charge density, which you might recall is the Poisson equation, but now we have this extra term, uh, 1 over speed of light squared, um, times the uh, second time derivative of the potential. Um, so we use the uh, D'Alembert operator um, of some general function. Um, you might argue that uh, here it's minus the the Allenbert operator, but you know it's pretty arbitrary. Um, and uh, we also assume that it equals some function uh, that is Galilean transformed. And uh, thus, because this is a wave equation, uh, the solution to the wave should have this form x minus v t. And uh, so we let x prime be x minus vt, that's a Galilei Galileo transformation. Um, so when we plug this into this equation, and we expand, or rather um, operate on f uh, with you know x1, x2, and x3, and we get uh, you know like terms on one side, uh, we can put those like terms and we write them as... Um, this uh, 1 over gamma squared, I'll get to what that is later, um, times the Laplacian on f equals g, but now this first coordinate is uh, Galileo, Galilean transformed. So back into the uh, vector potential, uh, the Laplacian of the vector potential minus uh, 1 over the speed of light squared uh, times the second derivative of the potential it's going to give you, um, you know, minus 4 pi over C, and this is the current density, uh, the charge Q times, a vo times its velocity. And um, hopefully you recall the relationship between the Laplacian and the uh, Dirac delta function. And same thing with the, uh, with the potential, and you're going to say, well, hang on a second. Um, 
Paul Dirac wasn't even born. Uh, no, he was not. But uh, perhaps you recall the heavy side step function, uh, which is related to the delta function in this way, uh, this integral across this interval. Um, is the heavy side function. Uh, so heavy side did know about the delta function before del uh, before Paul Dirac. So hopefully you recall this relationship, the way you pull out a, uh, pull out a constant out of a delta function, and the Laplacian operated on a Green's function. In this case, one over x or one over r or whatever your coordinates are will give you uh, minus 4 pi times the delta function. So you apply these to these equations up here, and you're going to actually operate on A and get, you know, for A1, A2, and A3, and you will get that the vector potential or its magnitude of A2 and A3 are zero. But uh, for A1, the one that is Galileo transformed, it's this gamma times V over C times Q over R. And if you put back in what you originally had for the like terms up here, for 1 over gamma squared, um, you get the gamma is uh, 1 minus v squared over c squared square root, or 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. And that is the, what we call today the Lorentz contract, uh, the Lorentz factor. Um, so, um, recall that the, um, um, this was the potential, but now it is also Lorentz contracted. Uh, there should be an equal there, R equals, um, this first coordinate that's Lorentz contracted plus X2 plus X3. And these are general coordinates, general, generalized coordinates. Um, so, um, hopefully you recall, um, the electric field is given by the static part plus the dynamic part. Uh, dynamic part being uh, 1 over the speed of light times the time derivative of the vector potential. And um, you plug these into here and you get this. Uh, now, here we are assuming that this is a charge a spherical charge um, with with the radius of small r uh, traveling at constant speed. So because it's traveling at constant speed and this vector potential only depends on speed, its derivative is zero. So, so we only get the static part. Um, and these, uh, of course, r is this up here and um, the E's are the basis vectors. So depending on what the coordinate system is, we'll give you your E vectors, your basis vectors. So using spherical um, uh, co uh, spherical coordinates, um, if you plug spherical coordinates in, uh, you will get this. And what does that say? Well, if you take the E field at some point, and the same E field at some moment, some phase of uh, pi over 2 afterwards, you get this. And this is equal to less than 1. Um, and that tells you that the electric field will be um, Lorentz contracted along the direction of travel. So if the static case, it's uh, spherically symmetric, it's going to um, cave in along the direction of travel.